having a primitive home are the antiques. And there are certain tropes that you see in most primitive homes. Our friend Alice has so many wonderful collections and you can see her home through this home tour right here. But today she's gonna to talk to us about banister chairs, tavern tables, and primitive table settings. So stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Hello, Alice. Hello, Anne. <laughs> Welcome to the drawing room. The drawing room? Yes. What does that mean? So a drawing room, when I was deciding what I was going to call this, I was going to call it a parlor. Then I actually looked, looked up what a parlor might have been used for, and they said that uh, parlor was more Victorian and a drawing room would have been earlier so we're going to call it a drawing room and they use this room to withdraw maybe meet guests and sort of a withdrawal from their everyday life which obviously was very hard and uh it just gave their their better items their furniture their decorative items would have been in this room and it would have been sort of like a little uh, mini vacation, a break, so to speak. So I thought that was really interesting when I looked it up because I had heard the term, but I never really knew what it meant. So welcome to my drawing room. So we are all taking a break from regular life and we are going to enjoy the elements of the drawing room, just like people would in the days of old. And we're gonna sit on the camelback couch. Oh. Part of the time when I'm not running around grabbing things to show you. Uh-huh. Um, so what I thought, seeing how I have so many collections, that maybe it would be best to stay in one room. Okay. And then kind of walk around and talk about the different collections in this room. Now, I know that there would not have been this much furniture in a 1780 drawing room because unless they were very rich and okay. the, the room probably would have been a lot bigger too okay uh, but this room probably has too much furniture in it to authentically portray uh, that room but I do have some things in here that they probably would have had so I thought I would just start with some of the furniture pieces and that way I'll be kind of walking around so I'm actually going to go over here and I'm gonna just, uh, these are one of my favorite collections. And these are called uh, banister back chairs. Um, there's, well, I guess I actually have quite a few of them in this room, so I must really like them. <laughs> I think these are uh, local, maybe Rhode Island, maybe Providence, I think. And the reason they were called banister, uh, these actually do look like banisters. Huh. If you turn them around, Mm -hmm. So they, uh, you know, it's it's a good name, uh, a good name for the chair. Oh yeah. And um, they don't look very comfortable, but uh, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I like when I buy a chair is I always look for the worn uh, areas on the on the rungs where they would have put their feet. Oh. And they're nice and smooth and uh, the, the chair was well used. And we'll go around and look at some of the other ones and some of them have less wear. Sometimes the bottom rung, maybe the child or the person had longer feet, the bottom one's worn more. Sometimes they're both worn uh, evenly, uh, but I love that. And then you can tell that, I mean, it's obviously got the age to it. I mean, it looks old, but sometimes they make reproductions and they can fool you. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I've had these actually appraised, and so I know they're probably all from the 1700s. And that's when these particular chairs, probably, I, the date I wrote down was, let me look, because I did a little research. These chairs, maybe like from 1720 to 1800, wow. 1820. Okay. These, uh, and then they were obviously made after that, but that's what I think these chairs are. So I have them uh, gathered around this... Um, lovely uh, tavern table. I'll tell you the story that goes with this table. It's got these beautiful feet. And I don't think there are any nails. You can see the pegs here. And this was a table. I went to a 
an antique show the day after or the weekend after Thanksgiving and I kept walking by it and of course I didn't buy it <laughs> and then I got home and I said I gotta have that table <laughs> so I called the, the woman thank God I had taken her card and she said I'm glad you called because I have somebody two women who are coming to look for tables today and I'm like I need the table so anyways that's a story behind this table <laughs> this one didn't get away thank okay. God for that so a tavern table and again just a place where you might uh, sit have something to eat or drink I have it set up um, well I to obviously to eat <laughs> drink and or read right <laughs> I like to set up these little vignettes so on this table I have a uh, a little oriental mat and um, sometimes they were just so pretty people didn't want to put them on the floor mm. so they would use them on the tables because they were they were valuable okay um, it started out you know people just had wood floors and then they had you know sand sometimes they uh, would uh, make into patterns that kind of looked like rugs and then you had the canvas floor cloths and then you had the rag rugs the hooked rugs oriental rugs obviously for the well-to-do uh, but I think a lot of times these small ones were put on tables because they were valuable they didn't want them on the floor at least like during the day when everybody was walking around hmm. so I also have this table set with um, redware um, and this actually is glazed and it was one of the um, earliest um, colonial things that they made to keep liquids uh, to eat off of um, other than treen. Tre this is a treen bowl which means it's made from wood or trees and this is what they probably would have used first. Wow. And then the, the redware potter was actually inexpensive to make. Uh, so that would have been the next thing. And it was glazed, obviously, to be watertight. And here's a couple of other redware pieces as well. Um, I have a little... little. Now, I did read that if you see redware unglazed which I have pieces in another room it was probably English but the colonists actually glazed them oh. so they could use them more so they kind of went from the the wood and then they went to uh, this because it was very inexpensive to make mm -hmm. and it's called redware because uh, I guess there's red oxide in the clay to make it that red color when uh. they uh, fired it okay and then they would go to pewter which was called the um, poor man's silver. Really? So now they're moving up in the world a little bit. Okay. You know? So they couldn't afford the silver, but this kind of the color of it. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, it's much better silver because it doesn't tarnish. And you like also don't silver. have to throw it away. It's not going to break. Okay. And the wood, they could still use the wood, but again, it would crack. And I, I would imagine it would absorb all the food and the smells. And that was probably not a good thing after a while. So this was definitely a step up. Okay. And another time we'll talk about all the pewter that I have. But uh, I did set this up as another... Um, Another tavern table. Now these little guys here are called porringers and they have these like little handles on them. And they were made, it sounds like porridge, so I'm assuming it things like porridge or uh, soups, thick soups and things like that would go in here. Okay. So I have that set up there and then I have a coin silver spoon, which maybe they probably use wood spoons at first this mm -hmm. is actually uh, coins that were melted down oh. and let me see if I can get a better one because these are tarnished but what they would do is they would mark them with their name now I think this says Rhonda or Rhoda okay they're also very light so you can really tell the difference between this and sterling huh. sterling is 0.925 this is less than that and okay. they're also very bendable but sometimes people uh, 
would uh, kind of melt their coins down and then they would have this as a way to kind of keep track you know they'd still have the value right you know but I'm guessing they probably used uh, wood mm. or they I think they just ate with their hands too yeah yeah. Sometimes they have that central bowl in the middle. Okay. And eat from that as well. And then I just have, you know, here again the little pewter cups. This one's kind of funky. It's kind of marked on the, with a little design on the bottom. Huh. Yeah, I don't know, you know, what that means, but. And then also, uh, again, another redware jug. And this has a little uh, different color slip glaze, kind of, you know. I'm sure it wasn't a design. I'm sure they just put it on and some dripped. Mm. But it kind of makes a nice little mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. So these are little red redware jugs. And then I do have like, you know, another, uh, um, just pewter cups. And again, this is also set with um, an oriental, a, uh, a very, I, I say very fine because the back of it, it's the stitches are so close together which makes the design very defined mm -hmm. as opposed to this oriental rug on the floor um, which is obviously maybe 30 years old but you see that the design isn't quite as fine as the two oriental mats on okay. either one of these tables hmm. But I love that I love that the color is so brilliant still after all this time. It's amazing. Isn't it? And you can it's tell beautiful. I love red. Yep. But over here, this maybe was in the sun. Mm. So it faded out to pink. Ah, yeah, look at that. But but again, I'm just gonna flip this yep. over so that you can see the knots. Yeah. How fine they are. Wow. And that's how you tell if if um, even even in now, if you buy a rug, the finer the knots are, the the more distinct the design is, oh. and, the, and it's probably more expensive. Right, too. right. Yeah. So in their drawing room, yeah, would they I, often serve food then? I would think that they would uh, serve someone something to drink okay. and maybe a little something to eat uh -huh. maybe someone was on their travels or maybe if it was a special occasion and it was yeah. a special room i'm guessing that yes they would okay it'll probably be something special mm -hmm. i don't know that for sure but mm -hmm. i'm just yeah. guessing you know yeah. that that's how it would be um the other thing on this table is a uh a lantern and obviously it's one you can carry mm -hmm. and um they had obviously they had a lot of candles in the house because again no electricity and they made the candles and the candle molds that was like a household activity and then these I don't know if I can, oh, I can't get them but um, these you could put the candle in you could carry it from room to room and you didn't have to worry about a breeze blowing the candle out oh, so you, could, you know yeah. so they had candles in every room which right. we'll talk about more of the candles as we go around. But this one they would actually carry. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you can see it above the window. I don't know that they would have actually hung one in the window, but mm -hmm. I had a, I had a lantern and I wanted it to put it someplace. Right. It's kind of like a candle in the window kind of thing, you uh -huh. know. So that one you could you can see the the hoop the uh, metal is probably a tin hoop that you could actually carry it. Okay. And I think they would also use these if they went outside obviously to the barn or whatever they needed light that wasn't going to get blown out by the wind uh-huh so that's what they would they would uh use these with the handles again i have the more uh more of the banister back this one has a little bit of a different type of a seat uh this is a rush seat these are rush and this is just um i don't know just a woven i don't know split maybe maybe split Interesting. And then this one is actually an old seat. This one here is the same type of seat, but again, you can see it's a newer replaced seat, but it's the same, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit different pattern. So mm -hmm. I think it's a splint seat. Hmm. And I and I love how these are uh, these banister backs. Um, they're just, you know, like, I, I love this, I don't know if you call it the crest, but let's call it the crest because we don't know what else to call it. I love how it's shaped. They're all 
all a little bit different. They all have their own little personality. Like, you know, this one. And I don't know if they're made up. This looks like a maple. I'm not sure what this is. This could have just darkened over the years. But I love that they're flat. And then the decorative part, again, the banisters. Wow. And this almost looks like tiger maple. Yeah. Doesn't it? It does. And then you can also tell their hand uh, does. You can see where they're pegged. Okay. And then the pegs, obviously, when the when the wood shrinks a little bit, they come out a little bit. Mm. And you can see the um, the marks. Um, I forget what the not score is it scoring mm -hmm. scoring marks. You'll see them. That's another indication that it was actually um, a hand uh, made chair. Beautiful. So beautiful. I love uh, the finish and the feel of it. And I want to say this, now this one, look at the finials on this one. Oh. Yeah, that's Now great. this almost looks oak here, but it might not be. I don't know. But there, oh, see, it does look oak here. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So, and it doesn't look like it was ever replaced, but who knows? Right. But it's got really pretty finials, I thought. And again, you got to see the wear. Oh my gosh. Look. Oh, I love it. So whose feet were on yeah. there? Wow. And you know, they're, they're little different colors. I don't know that if that means they were replaced or maybe that was just worn off more or right. maybe it was. Right. They obviously didn't like, you know, if, if one of these broke, they didn't throw the chair out. They just no. made a new one. Sure. And you know, the original recyclers. <laughs> oh, another, this is another beautiful tavern table. Um, not sure how, how old it is. I think it's pretty old. And again, along here, you'll notice a little bit of wear because people would put their feet here. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, I have other ones that have a little more wear, but the draw is to die for. Look at the little knobs on mm. the drawer. And then this is actually two pieces of wood. So that, and they're pretty wide. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. I'm guessing, you know, they've kept silverware or... I'm guessing that's what yeah. they did. Yeah. I, I guess a lot, because I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what would I do if I had a tavern table? I'd probably put those kinds of things in it. So, <clears throat> did people have tavern tables in their home, or was the, were the tavern tables I in think, the tavern? Well, I think that um, they had them in their home, and then they became known as tavern tables, because I think taverns obviously had little tables. Okay. But I think these, if I, if I researched it correctly, that they did have these small tables in their home. Uh, they might have had them up against the wall. Sometimes if you go to... Um, some of the museums, you'll see the furniture and it's it's all against the wall because a lot of these, maybe not the drawing room in, in, a, in a home where the person actually had money, but in a, it just a, a regular person's home, they would put the furniture around the edge and then move into the center of the room whatever piece they were using at the time. If it was dinner time, they moved the table in. Really? Yes. And then they would put it, so you'll see that a lot of these historical museums yeah. have them set up that way and that's for that reason because most of the houses didn't have a lot of rooms. Maybe two rooms on the bottom, maybe a loft and a couple more rooms. It wasn't until obviously there was affluence in the colonies and bigger homes and that sort of thing. Where, I always you know, thought they just didn't know how to decorate and they no, just threw everything on the no, ends. They were very smart, you wow. know, and they had to live basically in the one room where that fireplace was. Mm -hmm. So I do have a fireplace it's not on. I didn't press the button to turn it on, but, <laughs> I, you know, to, to have that flavor of a drawing room right. and have a fireplace in that room. Well, that was fun. I learned so much. I never knew about banister chairs. Join us the next time when we talk about things around the fireplace and we look at her beautiful clock.